Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Just to recap with what we have previously mentioned, the diet constituents end up into the liver. Diet carbohydrates are absorbed predominantly in the form of glucose into the liver. And lipids are absorbed into the liver from the intestine in the form of chylomicron remnants. The main constituent of chylomicron remnants is triacylglycerol. In the fed state, insulin is the predominant hormone. So when glucose enters the liver, glycolysis is activated by insulin because insulin activates glucokinase and phosphofractokinase too. So glycolysis goes on and pyruvate is produced. Pyruvate is further metabolized in an oxidative decarboxylation step that's catalyzed by pyruvate dehydrogenase into acetyl-CoA. In the fed state, acetyl-CoA goes to the tricarboxylic acid cycle to catabolically produce adenosine triphosphate. And the excess acetyl-CoA goes through the processes of de novo synthesis of both cholesterol and fatty acids. This is because the predominance of insulin as a hormone stimulates the de novo synthesis of both cholesterol and fatty acids, particularly stimulation of rate-limiting enzymes. Both are dephosphorylated by insulin because insulin inhibits ATP-activated protein kinase, so Insulin promotes the dephosphorylation state of the rate-limiting enzyme and in turn, it potentiates the synthesis of both cholesterol and fatty acids. The lipids in the liver, triacylglycerol, will be hydrolyzed into fatty acids and glycerol and will have some cholesterol coming from the shell of chylomicron remnants. This Cholesterol is going to be esterified into cholesterol ester by the enzyme ACAT. This enzyme removes an acyl group from acyl-CoA and adds it to cholesterol. So cholesterol is esterified to cholesterol ester and coenzyme A is released. So we'll end up with some constituents that are hydrophobic. Triacylglycerols cannot stay in the liver, otherwise fatty liver will be produced, so they should be disposed of. And the disposal will take place in the form of the very low-density lipoprotein. The nascently produced very low-density lipoprotein contain a core with high content of triacylglycerol, 55% or more of the contents of a very low density of lipoproteins is triacylglycerol together with very little cholesterol ester in the core and some cholesterol and phospholipids in the shell. So the very low density lipoprotein nascently produced in the liver are effluxed outside the liver. There are certain factors which promote that efflux. These factors include obesity, high caloric diet, ethanol, and estrogen in the circulation now interact with high-density lipoproteins with their apoproteins on their surface, the integral marker, and in addition they have APOC2 and APOE, so they donate their APOE and APOC2 to the nascently produced very low-density lipoprotein, so this converts the nascently produce VLDL into mature VLDL. The mature VLDL now has C2 and E apolipoproteins in addition to the integral APOB100 on the surface and a substantial amount of triacylglycerol in the center, about 55%. This is the mature VLDL. Mature VLDL with their C2 on the surface stimulate Lipoprotein lipase on the endothelial lining of capillaries of target organs and this leads to the hydrolysis of a substantial part of the uh, triacylglycerol which is stored in adipose tissue. The 
mature VLDL now is metabolized into another particle which we call IDL. So VLDL in their conversion to IDL they shrink and they contain very much less triacylglycerol but they still contain their cholesterol ester after the digestion of a substantial part of the triacylglycerol the C2 returns to the high density lipoprotein when C2 returns to the HDL and triacylglycerol has been substantially reduced by the action of lipoprotein lipase the mature VLDL now is converted into another particle which we call IDL or intermediate density lipoprotein so this particle has ApoB100 on their surface and they also have ApoE on their surface but they lack C2 which now returned to the high density lipoprotein after hydrolysis of triacylglycerols by lipoprotein lipase about the contents of the IDL as we mentioned triacylglycerols have substantially decreased in amount but cholesterol ester relatively increased inside the IDL the IDL has more than one fate first it could be uptaken by the liver cell on the liver cell membrane there is a receptor which identifies both ApoB100 and E together so this IDL receptor identifies both ApoB100 and ApoE together so the IDL is internalized and is degraded inside the liver cell so this is one fate of IDL the other fate is that IDL might be converted into another particle which is called LDL